It's getting to be that time of year. Maybe you went out and you harvested something nice and purdy from under the ground. Maybe you need to know how to store it. Maybe there is a certain way. And Batavia and I are here today to tell you all about it on the Backyard Gardens podcast. To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds and must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. Welcome to the Backyard Gardens podcast, where we talk about all things gardening and give the information out for you to be successful in your garden, whether it's your first or your last. We are your hosts, Ben, the backyard gardener, and Batavia, the front yard gardener. One in the country. One in the city. Now get ready as we dig deep into this wonderful world of gardening, as we learn to grow and grow for change. I'm not harvesting my sweet potatoes until they look like footballs, Batavia, I've decided. <laughs> You basically want, because I know you guys don't eat turkey, you basically want to have personal size sweet potatoes as like the thing that's served for Thanksgiving. Is that the deal? I'm leaving my sweet potatoes in until one potato will serve a family of 20. <laughs> Damn that's it. One way to, that's one way to, uh, <laughs> to, to manage it. Like You're basically <laughs> only planting um, like just for one one fruit or one vegetable like all you want is one harvest of sweet potatoes and by that you mean one sweet potato just one sweet potato no so you know um christmas when you're about i don't know maybe six or seven and you wake up about three in the morning and mm -hmm. everybody's still asleep you know how excited you are Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think I'm getting there with my sweet potatoes, man. I had a rough year with them last year, and it looks like it's going to be a bang up year. So, oh, I'm, okay, 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 yeah. okay. Yeah, I'm pretty uh, beside myself with excitement right now. I was talking to my uncle today, telling him about sweet potatoes, and he's like, "Well, yeah, you just hope they're sweet." And I'm just like, "Come on, man! Like, <laughs> don't do this to me! Like, whoever, of course they'll be sweet. They're sweet potatoes." Yeah. That's a perfect segue into to what we're talking about today, though. <laughs> Good job, Batavia. And that wasn't even on cue. My uncle Before, is here. He'll step in for a cameo. No, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. Before we get started, I want to tell you, I um, my wife bought me some of this Hint water. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Have, let, me, let me see. Okay. It. I don't think I've heard of it. It's just like a oh, water. Oh, I have seen that bottle. Yeah. So, um... First of all, it's way too expensive. Mm, and it says no. water infused with blackberry essence. Okay. Let me tell you, when they say hint, they ain't lying. It looks like somebody <laughs> stood over it and just looked at it and said, this will taste like blackberry. And that's all the flavor that got in it. And these people are tripping, man, for real, like straight up tripping. Like I I'm not even happy with this situation at all. So I'm having to oh, yeah, choke yeah. them down. Is, I mean, is but, it is the hint even not tasty? I don't know. It's such a little hint. Like okay, if somebody yeah. was giving me a hint of a secret, I would never get that secret <laughs> based on this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, come um, on, people. I'm picking up on what you're growing, throwing down. I almost said Good. growing down. Yeah. <laughs> no, it ain't nothing growing on this one, boy. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. But anyways, so this is a... This is a interesting topic for me. I have me a too. relationship with it. Mm, well, I have a very sour relationship, as a matter of fact. So, something um, told me that's where you're going to be with it. Well, it comes from a place of my ignorance mm. and desperation. Desperation. If, desperation. Yeah. So, let me rewind the clock. We're going to go back. Um, damn, I was trying to do some math real quick and failed epically. Two years. I was trying to. Uh, you you there weren't giving me a chance to get in the rewind sound. I was, I was it, like, my, I, I was struggling to add 365 <laughs> times 365, which would be 730 days ago. Or two I, years. I mean, you could say that. Yeah. I was trying to be technical, but anyways. Mm -hmm. So I got to. It was the day before Hurricane Florence, a Category 4 hurricane, was heading towards our coast. And I had these sweet potatoes. And I've talked about them before. I put five plants in a 4 by 8 bed. And they just grew gangbusters. 
So I knew that when it rains heavy, they split. Mm-hmm. And not to mention the fact there's a sweet potato down my uh, farmer down the road. And when I say farmer, I mean, he's a straight farmer. And um, he harvested all of his sweet potatoes because they were going to split. Mm-hmm. So I went out there and I harvested them and we were evacuating our house. I mean, it was to the point where they were like, look, you might not ever see your house again. So get out. So we're like, okay. So I go out there and I'm like, I'm going to harvest my sweet potatoes and I'm going to leave them here. And I, I got up early and I was like, damn, the only thing I want is to get my sweet potatoes. So me and my son are out there digging them up, digging them up, digging it up. And we got like 40 pounds out of it. It was amazing. So I took them and I said, now I'm going to set them in the house because we had to leave and I'm going to leave them here until we come back. And I told my wife, I said, well, no matter what, as long as the sweet potatoes don't blow away or wash away, we're going to be right regular with all this fiber we're going to be eating for the next <laughs> you know, couple weeks. Mm-hmm. So little did I know that we wouldn't have access to grocery stores or power for two weeks after that. And I had wow. my sweet potatoes. But what happened in the process was they did not get cured correctly. So they were mealy. Mm-hmm. And they were not sweet. And mm-hmm. we had 40 pounds of sweet potatoes that I literally had to choke down. Like, it was amazing. So, yeah. Oh, that sucks. That's my, that's my story with sweet potatoes. And what leads me into how we do uh, cure things like um, butternut squash, sweet potatoes, rutabagas, not re- well rutabagas are a little bit different but these are most of these are going to be the same you know all the crops that you would just be able to put into like a dark corner mm-hmm. to keep for months at a time so you jive onions regular white potatoes yeah 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 regular white potatoes stuff like that so this is um and unknowingly you know you know my apprehension let's not say fear in this moment my apprehension about root vegetables while all of those you name weren't root vegetables um i i do have pause when it comes to growing root vegetables i didn't realize it was also because of the whole process of curing um but it's game time baby you know it's it's put up or shut up man like i'm pulling stuff out of the dirt and listen, like, I will not be giving, you know, rotten potatoes out for Halloween, you know, this year. So we need to get this. No, right. And that's uh, I mean, there's a there's a timeline on when to harvest them. And I'm going to go ahead and say one thing about root crops. And I've said this online and in multiple places, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now. Growing root co- crops, it sounds weird, but it's a rush for me. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't no, know no, what... Saying, the, mm-hmm, I've heard you say this before. I don't know what the hell's going on down there, but when I pull up that carrot or that sweet potato, it's like, wow. It just blows my mind every time. That's like, you son of a bitch, you did it. You had faith, and you just looked at the green stuff that you're not even going to eat for months, and then all of a sudden, you've got it. You know what I mean? So... That's where I stand with root crops. I basically have a newfound love. Sorry uh, to my wife, but uh, we'll see ya. <laughs> I'm gonna marry you some carrots and stuff like that. And, until death do your root crops part. Until um, my root crops death us apart. <laughs> <laughs> now you're just being a silly head. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's um, you know, now. In southern, more southern, like in my zone in particular, which is 8A, is the time to harvest them. And same with uh, Batavia's, who's in uh, zone 2. Just kidding. She's in zone 6, right? Yeah, 6A, yeah. 6A. So, um, you know, it's all about you have to get them out in time for heat to still cure them. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's what builds that tough skin so they last. Yeah. So, yeah. I know are you familiar talking. with curing them? Yeah. Well, I mean, I've, I've had to research it because right. I've started to grow root vegetables. And again, in all honesty, I didn't avoid growing root vegetables because of the whole curing process. I avoided them because, you know, 
I want to see how I want to see this red pepper is red, right? I can see that yeah. on a pepper plant. Um, but this year, I mean, I've tried to grow carrots year over year and haven't been successful. So I haven't even had to, you know, figure out the whole curing process. But now I have some stuff, man. I'm like, I'm growing some stuff. Like, yeah. Hold on. Hey, can <laughs> oh, that was that was anticlimactic. <laughs> can you do me a favor? Sure. I got you. Got to move the camera. I only oh. see one eye. Oh yeah, it's driving yeah. me crazy. I feel like I'm talking to a pirate. How about now? That's so much better. Your beautiful uh, yeah. shining face. There it is. Yeah, I washed there my face before is. this this episode, and you know, you know how it is. I've told you about. Yeah. You know, I get a little glossy, um, but I was feeling I sticky don't. and icky, man. It's starting. To, it's the weather is weird here, which also falls into what we're talking about. Like we're Whoa. getting sixty degrees for the mornings now, and yeah, so. That's clutch right there. That means, mm. so when you plant sweet potatoes, and I'm just going to use sweet potatoes because they're on my mind, um, you need to have 100 days roughly to grow them. So you've got to do a little little equation to figure it out because you don't want them to come out at the frost date. Mm -hmm. You want them to come out beforehand because they have to cure in like 80 degree heat for like 10 days. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, what I read as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mine that year cured an 80 degree, 100 percent humidity temperatures. But I did one crucial thing. I didn't spread them out. Oh, you piled. They, you I left, left them piled them, up when you guys harvested I left them piled them. up in yeah. a basket because I had to dip out right quick. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. That being said, that's an important thing. You need airflow around them, mm -hmm. right? You need the airflow it's, to come around them and stuff like that. It's interesting how some things kind of repeat themselves. We've talked over the course of this summer about kind of some vegetables that don't like to be crowded and what happens if you don't have proper airflow, you know? Yeah. And here we are with vegetable has been harvested and, you and know. needs proper airflow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's in, specifically for the curing process. So once they're cured, and you know you're ready to store them, stack them on up. Make a you know make a, a sweet potato. I don't know what, what's a yeah pyramid. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that part where they're transitioning out of that growing mechanism and that dirt, you like that, don't yeah. you? Yeah, I yeah. Do. I do. <laughs> to that space where you know what's what do we say? Ten days. Yeah, that's crucial. Um, and those are the things that you just, you don't know if you don't look for it. If you don't know to look yeah. for it, you don't know that information, right? Yeah. And garlic Tomatoes is the don't same need way. to be cured, you know? Hmm? Garlic is the same thing, yeah. too. Yeah. And that was a you know big what? one. Garlic is a big thing people talk about in the garden community. Like, oh, it's time to plant your gar your garlic, you know? Oh, get your yeah. garlic in before the end of the year. But then you never hear anything else about it. You know, no. uh, maybe you hear That's because it comes and goes, though. It's like, yeah. you're like, and this is a bad word to use, but you're like horny to keep doing gardening. And it's like the last thing you can stick in the ground. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then when you get it at the end, you still got to cure the shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, you got to get it up. Mm -hmm. You got to cure it and all that. So um, going back to the sweet potatoes, what I do with my sweet potatoes is, you know, those um, wire racks. Those like mm -hmm. white wire racks. I take those and I just set them on the ground mm -hmm. in my shed because my shed gets to like 100. So it gets, I think I was in there the other day, it was like 115. I thought I was going to die, literally. But I put them on there and then the air can go around underneath and all that mm -hmm. stuff all around them and, and so on and so forth. And what that does is it toughens up the skin. Yeah. So you don't want to bruise them when you take them out either because that kind of starts to damage them. And it gives them a point mm -hmm. to start to rot. Mm -hmm. And you also don't want to wash them. Do not yeah. wash them. You want to leave that dirt on. So I know for um, white potatoes, like, you know, they talk about new potatoes and you technically can um, take white potatoes out of the soil and out of that good old dirt and you know wash them up and cook them we're talking about curing because you want to store this thing for a while yeah so for sweet potatoes i don't know this this is my question to you if i pull a sweet potato out of one of my grow bags you know tomorrow can i cook that baby up right then and there or is this a vegetable that has to go through that curing process no i mean you can cook it it won't be as sweet 
but mm-hmm. you can definitely cook it. Mm-hmm. So, but when you pull it up, I mean, have you harvested sweet potatoes before? No, I haven't. I almost okay. accidentally stumbled upon <laughs> one poking yeah. out like you get back down there you know the temptation of like just saying what the hell man pull yeah this sweet potato out but yeah so no, I haven't. Mm-hmm. when you pull them out of the ground they don't look quite like what you would see at the grocery store because they're still nice and wet and moist and everything like that mm-hmm. from being in so they're a little bit brighter and the skin is really delicate so like when you dig them up you have to be very careful You know, you want to dig on the outside of where the plant meets the ground Mm -hmm. and, you know, give it a plenty of space. Like you're in grow bags, right? So it shouldn't be as hard. Mm -hmm. But if you're like me and you're old school AF, you dig around and you make a little hole and then you just lift it up and then you'll start finding sweet potatoes. And then anywhere where the vine was laying on the ground and created another root, you could mm-hmm. potentially have sweet potatoes all the way down that vine. Mm-hmm. So that's how I got like, cause I thought, you know, for me, my first year I was like, Oh, I'm just going to have like a handful of them. And then as I dug, I was like, Holy crap, I got to keep digging around. And I even yeah. missed some. And then the next year they came up and I had oh, more yeah. sweet yeah, potatoes. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, um, I wonder, did, have you saved any of your sweet potatoes for, um, to, uh, what do we call it? When you Chit. create sweet potato sli- you know, slips, have you <laughs> used any of the potatoes from the previous um, year to create slips the next year? Yeah, to, to- total failure I have. Oh, okay. Um, oh, I just th- didn't was give it this them year's? A- yeah, I just didn't give mm. them enough time. So yeah. last year, okay, so last year my sweet potatoes, I moved them to a different bed and I don't know what happened. It's in where the wild things grow. So I have two mm-hmm. beds side by side. And this one is the one closer to the house. And I think uh, two things happened. One is they didn't, they never had a whole lot of leaves on them. So I wasn't real sure what was going on, but I had deer come by every, roughly about every two weeks and nip the top off the leaves. And I think it, what happened is, it may have just kind of stressed them to the point to where they couldn't actually produce. Mm. But the other thing too, is I'm having a sneaking suspicion is the sun gets shaded out there. Like in the beginning of the year, it's fine. But as we get through the summer, it's gets less and less sun. And that may have been an issue. And Mm. I don't know if next year I want to take a gamble with that or not. So I have to, I got to figure it out. And actually right now is the time for me to go out there and really say, okay, the sun's up now and it's down in this area. Now it's shaded. So I have to really figure it out. So then last year I maybe got about 10 pounds of sweet (laughs) potatoes. So it was not a stellar year for me. Um, Do you remember how sweet potatoes generally are, you yeah the ones I see in the stores at least remember I've never grown them myself um before this year and I've never bought like sweet potatoes even from a farmer's market are they normally the size that you see in the stores because 10 pounds could you know by my count could be three or four sweet potatoes it was a it varies so like the ones right under the roots they are the biggest and then as you go down you get little smaller ones so I had a bunch of um ones that were like four or five inches long maybe Mm -hmm. and they were great they were perfect i'd take them and just like throw them in an oven to do a little have little like sweet potato snacks you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that it wasn't that much of an issue but um they vary i mean last year i had so okay and last year this is where i screwed up again because they were taking so long, I left them in the ground even longer. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then I came out and it was already cold. So like some of them were starting to rot and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And when I say mm-hmm. cold, I mean, you know, in sweet potato world, cold is not very cold. But I was probably in like early October. I remember we were just starting to get like cooler mornings and I went out there and mm-hmm. I was like, I'm just going to go pull them. Yeah. So um, I'm like any day now. I'm going to go out. I think what I'm doing in all seriousness is I'm holding on until the next big weather event comes by, which possibly could happen and then do the same thing I did last time, but set them up to cure. So I don't screw them up. Yeah. I'm doing the math. And, um, for my sweet potatoes, um, they have been planted. The slips 
have been planted as of the recording of this podcast, 81 days. So you technically need about 20 more days. Well, no, what variety did you have? Uh, Beauregard for the majority. There was the other variety I got from the big box store, Home Depot, and they. So I just, you I probably all over. in about a week, you're probably good to pull. Yeah, I'm thinking somewhere around the 15th because it's nice and odd as a number. Um, Mid month. Yeah, I like odd numbers too. Mm-hmm. I knew we got along for some reason. Yeah, there so it that's, is. <laughs> so and then I mean you know it's like I said you put them in your shed like. It keeps them out of the cool. Your house is too cold to cure them. Mm -hmm. So like if you have a garden shed, yes, for sweet potatoes, or you have a garden shed or something like that, that's a great place to put them. And some people, like my man P. Allen Smith, he has a damn drying building where he dries everything. Oh, wow. I'm like, yeah, that's what I need. I need a drying building. So Yeah, I um I have one of the wire racks that I'd had it for years and years and over the years I've stored various things on them. I have the same type of wire racks as a part of my girl room where I, you know, I've been starting seeds this year. Um but I moved one of them into the garage. I really 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 want shelves in the garage. But that's another conversation for another day. Like I'm so close mm-hmm. to saying like you can YouTube it, Batavia. You can do it yourself. Um, so anyway, I, I always try things out first. So instead of having shelves built or purchased or hiring someone to do it, I just put up one of the wire shelving units to say, okay, would I really use it? Or is it just like a, a good idea? So anyway, I have one and I actually actively use it. So now the thought is it's a really good spot to cure some of these vegetables like sweet potatoes that need that kind of heat. Uh, mm-hmm. versus things that I would put in my basement. Um, so we'll continue the conversation and we'll see where mine are going to go. So I can tell you that for shelves, all you need is those little L brackets and a plank of wood. And it's easier to put up than them wire shelves. Uh, so. Well, the wire shelves, you know, it's like a self, um, it's a, uh, a unit that sh- you can't be easier than that. That's easy peasy, breezy, beautiful cover girl. I mean, it's screw screw lay the piece of wood on top mm-hmm, it's it mm-hmm. doesn't I gotcha, I gotcha. and especially in a garage where it doesn't really matter yeah yeah yeah. you know yeah. what i mean unless you're like one of those freaks that want their garage to be like picture perfect but you know no, i just don't want to run uh, bag my car into the shelf yeah yeah when you're a hammer everything looks like a nail <laughs> yeah oh yeah i just What's have a hammer in my hand <laughs> Yeah, it was just laying you? on my desk. <laughs> I'm doing some remodeling in my office, so um, okay, gotcha. Can't you tell with the green background now? Is this the? Is this my our favorite color green? Like in my basement? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. yeah. What color was it yeah, before? I, it was green. I just had okay. so I'm cheap, and when I painted, I was like, I'm just going to do an accent wall. Mm-hmm. It and looks so, brighter. Like, or yeah, is it just the well, lighting? It's just the lighting. No, those are your eyes that are sparkling. Oh, I'm sorry. I got mixed up there. (laughs) She's amazing. She is this girl. Tell your friends. Yeah. (laughs) Tell them all. But um, so, you know, curing sweet potatoes is that's one way to kind of there's I mean, I think some people put them in the oven Mm. at like really low temperatures. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But basically you can't go wrong with drying them outside. Yeah. And just keep them dry while you dry them, you know. And then yeah. when they're done, you store them in a cool place. So you don't want like if you have like a radiator, you don't want it next to your radiator. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. We actually I was, I'm trying to convince my wife now because my butternut squash plant, who is just won't stop. I think we're up to 25 butternut squash off of it. That's crazy. And um, yeah, it is crazy. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm running out of room. And she's like, oh, we don't have that much more. And I was like, baby, we got a whole sweet potato bed that the vines are coming out of. Like, I don't even have, I don't know what's going on under there or anything, but we got to do something. Mm-hmm. I told her, um, I'm trying to talk her into let me store them under the guest bed because it's nice and cool in there. It's dark. Oh, okay, and dark. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that's what we're trying i'm trying to do and she's like i don't want food in there and i'm like well it's not a big deal you just go out there it's like your little grocery store so because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and that's yeah, one I thing have i've a, been a spare room but it's upstairs and you know heat rises so you know it's yeah on, in an upstairs bedroom and i don't you know i got plenty of room downstairs in the basement 
but it's that whole, you know, darkness, like true darkness. So I was clearing out some space for some other things I have going on. So I have a couple of like kind of utility closets, but you know what? If you give me space, I'm going to use it. So I was rearranging the empty boxes that I've been storing. Cause I guess I'm going to build a playhouse or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I was rearranging those to make some room for uh, all the vegetables I'm going to need to cure. And that's, so you know, just- basements are a good place for it, too, as long as they're dry. You know, a lot of basements yeah. can be damp. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't, so, luckily, I don't does, have that issue. Yeah, kind of muggy and damp and yeah. Does yours get cold? Um, well, it's going to it's always cooler than the rest of the house. But I've actually looked and looked to try to figure out how to adjust the vents because sometimes it could get pretty warm in there down in the basement mm-hmm. during the winter. Like if I have the furnace on, right, you know, mm-hmm. um, it's not as warm as it is on the main floor or, you know, upstairs, you know, it's not that warm, but it is still it's I don't know, probably 70 degrees easily, you know. Yeah, that's a little that's a little on the warm side for storage of food. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, do you have? Then the opposite well, you, side would be like in the um, in the um, garage. Obviously, that's it's not heated. Um, it's not really even insulated. You know, um, so but then that's yeah, but y'all get you're brick into, up there in the summer in the yeah, winter time. So say, y'all get, that's what it's the extreme. It's like you're getting into the 30s or 20s. It's going to be inside yeah. of the garage, probably the 20s on the coldest days. You know, so yeah, you don't now, want the them reality, to freeze. Yeah, the reality is, though, there's I think we had this conversation around like I've had a bottle of water inside of my car inside of the garage. And there have been cases where that bottle of water has frozen. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh-uh. You didn't have that conversation? No, we did not have that conversation because I have a theory. Did that There's, make up the whole thing? N- no. Okay. I have bottles of water that won't freeze either. There's something in that water that keeps it from freezing. No, I just said it did freeze. My water totally. froze. Um, well, shit, I don't know now. I don't want to lie to the people. Like, yeah, because I've, 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 I've had... Because I keep emergency water, right? And as a part of my emergency kit, there's been water in there that's frozen. And I'm going to say, I mean, but you know how cold it gets here, man. If we're talking about it's getting to the single digits and over the course of days, yes, I'm going with froze completely. There's nothing in my water. There's some... No, there's something in bottled water, I'm here to tell you. It's, you know, especially if you drink this hint... There ain't nothing yeah, in that. There's definitely there a ain't hint nothing. To something. <laughs> it's yeah. <a> bullshit. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely a hint of that in there. Mm-hmm. But um, so this summer I've been um curing the butternut squash mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that I've been getting, and then I think the same goes for like spaghetti squash, which I know you're getting. Yeah. Um, acorn squash, um, all your winter squashes. They're all pretty much meant to store for a while Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um you just those are real easy you just cut them off the vine but you want to leave some stem on them okay yeah that's important a lot of people don't really like some it it might be tempting to like twist it off Mm -hmm, and take mm -hmm. that stem off but if you leave some of the stem and then i just leave it in that same shed for a couple days not like 10 days or anything I think I left it in there for like four or five days. And that just toughens mm-hmm. up the skin a little bit and makes mm-hmm. them, mm-hmm. prepares them for stores. I don't think it necessarily changes the taste, though. I don't mm, think. Yeah, that's the um, that's the question. I've been looking at some of my squash in particular, and they haven't changed the color yet. I, don't, I, I planted them in June, so they've had two and a half months, maybe two months for sure. It should be about months. ready. Um, so they're still like a greenish color. They haven't turned to the, you know, kind of yellowish or orangish color yet. Um, and I was looking at them and saying, well, geez, you know, you know, again, October is up for grabs. September weather is still going to be, you know, kind of summer, early fall weather, but it could get, the temperatures could drop significantly, um, in October. So I'm just hoping I still have enough warm days, you know, like we've been talking about for the sweet potatoes too. Um, so, but yeah, I'm, I'm generally feeling good. Um, I love the idea of things like if we talk about squash in particular, the winter squash, like how long those things can keep, you know, dude, it's crazy. That makes me because it it also takes the pressure off of you got it. You got to do something with it, you know? Yeah. Um, And that runs deep up in my garden. 
Yeah, I mean, that's a big part of how I garden, though, is, like, the more stuff that I can put back. And, I mean, I enjoy eating it, too. It's not like I'm growing it. I'm like, that shit's gross, but it lasts. You know, I enjoy eating it, so I can set it back and, you know, let it go. Yeah. yeah, But, you know, and cabbages are about the same way. They last a really long time, but you you don't have to cure them. Yeah, and you store those in the refrigerator, right? Like you're In the refrigerator, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, unless you had, like, a root cellar, which is, like, you know... Uh, some people will dig a hole underground and fill it with sand. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was Excuse fascinated with, with the concept of well, a couple of things. Um, the concept of sand um, still like be it's an like a current process. Like people are still doing that. Um, back in the summer, I was talking to my great aunt who I have a couple of them, so I'm not you know pointing anyone out in particular. But she's turning 75 years old this year. Um, and or young, so that narrows it young. down. Yeah, no. <laughs> that narrows it down. Okay. Um, well, it yeah, it probably does. Um, and so she and I were talking about um, they grew up. I don't know, it was twelve or thirteen of them, um, and they grew up in Mississippi. And they talked about the farm, like a true farm, right? And they were talking about using things like salt to cure food, you know, meats and things. And yeah. I, she was just, you know, we, I mean, we were talking forever and she was telling me about it. And I was just like, wait, what? You did who? Like, how did you keep that? And the reality is we get so far removed when it comes to, you know, current day technology and, and access. It's like, well, yeah, people still ate meat and they didn't eat it, you know, always fresh. Um you know, people didn't, you know, farm all year long, right? You know, so um, so some of the tried and true methods like using sand to store it. I just, I, I thought about it for a quick second. And I'm just like, you know, it's one more thing for me to buy, you know. Um, and I think I'm going to try a different method, especially because I'm growing so few, I think, root vegetables that I'm hoping that whatever I need, I already have as far as space. Um, yeah. So, you know, so yeah. I haven't I don't know anything about storing it in sand and um, I've seen people do it and it is something that I would like to explore in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, I just am completely ignorant to it. I have no idea like the science behind it or anything. Mm-hmm. I just I don't get it. And, yeah. you know, the problem with where I live is it can be 20 degrees, but then the next day it'll be 60, you know, so. It goes up and down, up and down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's, well, I mean, I think that a part of it is we're not trying to keep these vegetables forever. We're just trying, we are not ready in some instances to use them all once we pick up the harvest. Like once you pick those vegetables or you dig them out or whatever the case is and you want some time, you know, so am I trying to keep sweet potatoes until next year's sweet potato harvest? No, you know, um, but do I want to no. keep them to until Thanksgiving? Yeah, you know, like absolutely. Oh, if you can't keep them till Thanksgiving, then you've got a problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if they don't go that long, you've done something like way wrong. So, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, ours lasted up until late spring, early summer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's a pretty good stretch. I mean. You know, towards the end, we weren't, you know, at first you eat a lot of sweet potatoes and then at, towards the end, you're like, oh, all right, I'll get another sweet yeah. potato. You know, like this year, winter squash will probably be about the same way. Be like, all right, get, eat another one, you know. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, And the thing is, is I wish I knew what the hell I did for that squash because so I could do it again. Sometimes you're just blessed in that way. Yeah. You know, you take them. your... You take your wins and losses, but mm-hmm. um, we'll see. You know, it, it's when you do the root crops and all those different things, you know, it, and, you know, like carrots and parsnips and stuff like that. Like, you know, I know we've talked in the past on here about how they get sweeter when they get cold. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's like, you know, collards, like I ain't never had a sweet collard. You know what I mean? Like, Don't even get me started just, on that. Yeah, but a carrot, they do get sweeter. I have had that. So, um, you know, in like rutabagas, I'm growing those for the first time this year. So I've been reading up a lot about it. I am not in any way prepared to give any advice on rutabagas at all. But I've just looked at it. They appear to store for a long time as well. Mm -hmm. And I mean, when you buy them at the store, they coat them in wax. Yeah. So, you know, that might be a method. I'm 
I mean, ask me if I'm going to coat my vegetable in wax. Are you going to cut your ve- coat your vegetables in wax? Hell no. Okay. That yeah, just sounds good. exhausting. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I, I got. Yeah, up. I was even tired asking you. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I'm. I'll be growing them in in my spring garden premiering yeah. in 2021 so i'll look you're gonna to do rutabagas too yeah yeah because i got, yeah. you know i have you know i got a package or 18 of rutabaga seeds um but i also did it to kind of curtail um my white potatoes you know and the potential lack thereof but then i just didn't get them planted in enough time because they're a pretty long season vegetable from what i understand yeah they take a while they've i've been <laughs> let me tell you i've been because you know For us, a fall garden is kind of difficult because it stays hot for so long Mm -hmm. and then it drops off. So you've got to get this stuff started. So like I had to reseed my rutabagas like probably four times and now they're starting to come. So like all of my um, fall crops, I've had to continuously like go out and reseed and all that stuff. So yeah, speaking of that, though, I've been thinking about like. While it's not as hot for you, um, it's not as hot as it is for you guys here. Once that weather cuts over to it's like manageable for these kind of fall crops, the time from go, which is like right now right. to the end is so short for me. So there is a right. small piece of my mind that's like saying, you know what? There are probably going to be certain things like leafy greens that you'll be able to grow in the fall. There'll be some things like beets and um, radishes. Um, there'll be a handful of things that you can really grow and enjoy. Spinach is another, you know, kind of shorter season yeah. that you can do better when it comes to like, you've convinced me to start indoors and then plant out like right about September for me um, because I've, I've tried it and I just can't get the timing right for the heat direct sowing seeds in the heat of July or August for the fall garden. So we'll see. Um, but for it's all about of, consistently watering, like every day you have to go out and get mm-hmm, it wet. Mm-hmm, yeah. And it's a pain. Well, there are a whole bunch of things that's that are mixed up in that though, for me. So there is the consistent watering, but the places that I've chosen to do or try fall vegetables are like on the concrete patio, which is, um, that requires more water than the in ground beds, you know, but guess what's in my in ground beds, shit ton of tomatoes, right? You know, yeah. so even, and I've tried to sow seeds inside of the cage, baby, the previous version 1.0. And I think it's just between the cage itself, because obviously that's material the tomato leaves. I tried to do some lettuce and I think some beets too. They just didn't germinate well, or if they germinated, they didn't grow. So all of that said, like I have almost like three or four different growing mediums that I have to kind of contend with. Um, so we'll see. I am interested in getting some of the things in the fall that I couldn't grow in the uh, summer, but obviously already I'm so eager for a spring garden because I've learned so much over this last year. We're getting a little bit off topic, but um, learned so much this year, or this last year when it comes to like how early I can plant things. Um, and I think that will also satisfy some of the needs for some of these plants that I just don't know in Chicago in zone 6A. If on my schedule, I'm going to have enough time to have a full fall garden with all of kind of your warm and toasty fall veggies, you know? Um, yeah. So well, I don't I think, think I'm going to have time to start carrots for a fall garden, you know? No, at this point, you're, you're a little too late for carrots. No, I mean, like in general, like the idea of getting carrots to germinate, planting them it's, basically it, in the midst of the summer, you know? So I did it and I had to reseed a couple times too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but it's, well, I mean, I, I'm not, I don't have a successful fall crop yet, so I can't say anything, but they're coming up now mm-hmm. and it's takes some, so like when you plant them in the spring, it takes them a long time because it's not warm Yeah, yeah. because <laughs> carrots can be very inconsistent as well. Mm-hmm. So then you have the whole option of like, okay, we're going to do carrots in the summer for fall, but it's so damn hot and you plant them so shallow that you literally like on hot days, you, I mean, you know, it's 94 degrees right now mm, today goodness, here. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, what do I do? You know what I mean? It's like, mm-hmm. you're supposed to wait, but if you wait, then you don't have time. Da, 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 da. So I just kept reseeding. And finally it looks like I'm kind of at the point now where I'm like, I'm not reseeding anymore. Yeah. You know, my, my broccoli isn't doing as well. Um, so I'll, I'll just buy some starts and, 
you know mm. i don't have good luck with broccoli seeds so yeah i but, think um i didn't just one other comment i um and we'll talk about this in coming episodes uh, just in august you were asking me has it run its course am i and uh, has my garden fatigue setting in? And right then mm-hmm. and there, that was probably, you know, two or three weeks ago you asked me. I was like, hell no. I am just like doing laps in my garden beds. And um, as of this moment, as of today, the fatigue has started to set in. And you know a telltale sign for me is when I stop caring so much about like keeping the garden area neat. So like the yeah. there's this level of exhaustion. Like I came into the house um, through the garage and through the back today, and I'm like, is that my garden spade? Like just sitting out here, <laughs> like yeah. you know, my push broom is like sitting on the back deck. And it's like you know, and and this is a critical time for me because this is what gets me in trouble in the spring because it it I start to get tired of all of it. And then I don't put stuff back. So, you know, remember I was saying, why did it take me so long to start in the spring? Because I have so much shit to clean up because I kind of just let things go, you know, come September, October. So I'm going to give myself this week just to say, you know, you know what it. Uh, and then hopefully I'll get back man. on my game. Yeah, next take week. Take a break. So. It ain't. I've had some know, big garden supposed, wins. So. It's supposed to be enjoyable. It's not supposed to yeah. feel like a job, you yeah. know. And I know it kind of is your job being on the podcast and all that stuff but at the same time like you got to enjoy it to an extent and if you're not enjoying it then it's an issue yeah you know what i also consider i agree with that and i also consider like it's not like i'm just you know knitting hankies not to say that that's not you know important for some people like i'm like i'm literally growing food right Mm -hmm. you know so it is something that's serious you know um so i don't mind putting in a little work Um, I think there is a bit of like I'm right in the cusp of processing food and I'm actually I feel pretty good about the whole curing process, meaning I'm not uber intimidated by it. I'm still, um, you know, saying, all right, let me get these veggies so I can start curing them. Right. Because that's going to be the make or break. My hope is I'll know on the other side of that 10 day period for sweet potatoes. I'll know, you know, on the other side of that two week period or so for my regular white potatoes, like, you know, all right, we're good to go guys and gals, you know, like you did it. Have you pulled up Um, your white potatoes yet? I'm sorry. What's the question? Have you pulled up your white potatoes yet? (laughs) I'm glad you asked, dear Watson. Um, (laughs) I have harvested some white potatoes. Yes, I have. And you got some? Yeah. Yeah, my sweet potatoes overtook my my potato plants. So they could possibly still be down there. I don't really know. I have to. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, you know what? I'll just figure it out. Yeah, I'll go see, but they got all intertwined and all that stuff. So it's um, they're all in the where the wild things live. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, they're defined. So like last year, it was no defined bed space at all. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was just a big space. And this year, I defined as best I could two different beds. And the the whole point of that space is for just to let the sweet potatoes grow. So mm-hmm, it's like whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, like they're spilling out over the bed. I'm like, whatever, I don't care. You know, I, yeah. so what? I can't walk down the path. Like, you know, the the year that I did so well with them, I literally mowed them <laughs> so I could keep them. You know, uh-huh. I would go over them with my lawnmower yeah. because they were just getting too much. So, you know, now it's kind of like, all right, we're, we're out of that phase. Now we're just going to let them kind of go. I haven't messed with them. The mint that I planted. Remember mm-hmm. the mint that I planted? That's kept the, the deer away. Yeah, it kept the deer. That's away? kept. Yeah, yeah. I'm oh, pretty sure awesome. it's because it's it's so um, pungent the smell. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think that keeps the deer away. So I haven't had deer issues. I had deer issues one time, and then I put the mint in, and I haven't had deer yet. Oh, interesting. But this is the time of year where the deer will come out. So mm-hmm. we're gonna kind of. Okay. But now at this point, it's like, go ahead, have a feast, <laughs> whatever. I got mine. You know what I mean? I feel like at this point. I'm at I'm at that stage where it's like I got my potatoes like mm-hmm. it's just me one I don't feel like going out and digging them up because it's so hot so mm-hmm. I'm just gonna let them cool and the other thing too is I'm trying to figure out because you're supposed to you know about 
a week before you um, harvest them, you're supposed to hold back water. Yeah, we're talking, well, in, in both cases, sweet potatoes and white potatoes, yeah. Right. So I'm trying to figure out a way to hold back water because I still have a whole nother bed over there that's getting watered. Oh, okay, yeah. Which I'm going to fix this whole situation. It's all mm-hmm. getting fixed next year. I'm next going year. soaker hoses. Soaker hoses. Uh-huh. I'm doing it. I don't care. Okay. Or you could just turn off the spout to the, that whatever you're planting, you know. Yeah, but like then this, I had, yeah. yeah, like if I had a splitter to go to the two beds, mm-hmm. then I can just mm-hmm. cut one of them off. Yeah. But, um, you know, anyways, so for now... I got to deal with that. But once I figure that's that been, out. That's been a benefit of growing them in containers. Um, mm-hmm. and both the sweet potatoes and well, I haven't withheld water from the sweet potatoes, but the, with the white potatoes, um, I've been able to just to say, all right, I'm not going to water these bags or these containers. You know, I've been, I've actually been secession, um, <laughs> harvesting potatoes. Uh, there's some that I planted at different times, but then there's also, um, a few bags that I planted at the same time. You know, it's kind of like, all right, let's open up the first one. Let's see what we got, you know? And yeah. so, um, so yeah, I can tell some of the, um, bags that were damper you know, in containers that were a little bit more wet. Um, I really can't say whether there's a difference in the, the harvest based on that. Um, but I know that it, it would impact the curing of it because you really don't want to do that. You don't want to pick those those potatoes out of the container or dig them up or whatever when it's wet. Like, you know, like today it's raining and I can't tell how much it's raining, you know, but I'm not going to bother about harvesting anything like those potatoes, for instance, um, for another week or so until things can dry up a bit, you know, so. Yeah. See, I have about two weeks until I might be forced to harvest them. Sweet potatoes so, or white potatoes? Either one. Okay, yeah. Anything that, that can split. Get, is it, oh, you're gonna, are you guys going to start to get really wet weather? Well, we might get another hurricane. You know, oh, we're, in the, yeah, yeah. we're a couple of days from the peak of the season. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So every, every, every year around my birthday, we get a hurricane. So, got it, got it. you know, if we're going to get one like that one we had, then yeah, for sure. I mean, we got 40 inches of rain in three days. Mm-hmm. But um, if we, you know, if it's just going to be normal you know, we might, I might not do it, but yeah, I think so what I'm going to end up doing is when I water, I'm going to lay a tarp over it. Yeah. I was actually just, thinking about that because, um, just putting some plastic over it when we got this rain, but I said, you know what? We'll see. Um, I, for curing though, for the white potatoes, I am, um, I have them in my basement um originally they were in the grow room but then i realized that technically the lights in the grow room the grow lights are on like you know i don't know what's that 16 hours a day you know so i had yeah. to like cover with the paper towel so that's what i was clearing the box or the boxes around for in that little little uh nugget of an area in my basement to kind of put them there so i've had some for um and i've been it's been hard to hold this back i was actually going to save it for an update uh, for our September update, but I've um, save it, save it, save it, save it. Yeah, I've don't do been, it. Uh, I've been waiting to tell you all, and the wait will continue a while longer. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's uh, sweet potatoes, white potatoes for curing. We talked about butternut squash for curing. Onions, I have um, that. Um, so what I've read. And you tell me if this is what your experience has been or what you've studied on this. But for onions, they kind of tell you, one, when it's time to harvest them. The, um, st- I don't know if you call them stems, the green part of the onion, where normally mm-hmm. you could eat that part. Uh, it starts to dry up and fall over mm-hmm. um, as a signal that, all right, this onion's ready. Um, one of the things that's important for the onion, and that's actually wanting heat too, from what I've read. Um, you want to make sure you're not doubling them up or anything like that. And they also um, like to like really dry out. So when you think about when you buy an onion, what that looks like, you know, kind of like the, the shell of the onion, the skin or mm-hmm. whatever. Like you have to get your onion from where it was in the ground to that. Um, and I don't know, what is it, like 10 days or something for that too? 10 or 14 days for onions? Yeah, it's, it takes so that and garlic, they both take a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's important. To, so, OK, so I know that we've kind of been off subject for about 15 minutes now, but <laughs> to get back on, um, you know, when you do it, 
why do you dry it? Do you know why you dry it? Um, to is it? No, I don't know what why you dry it. Because the moisture will cause rot. Okay. Yeah. And mold and and mold and all that other mm-hmm. stuff. So you want to eliminate that. Um. So like garlic and onions, they are very common the way they're dried. The only difference is garlic is not as big as some onions, so they might be a little quicker. Mm-hmm. But think about when you you plant onions and garlic and when you harvest them, and that'll tell you a lot about it. See, that's the problem a lot of people have is when, you, when you're planting a garden or planting or planting, whatever, a lot of times we try to trick what how it's supposed to go you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. like right now you might be doing another succession planting of like bush beans or something Mm -hmm. you know try and get like one last crop out yeah but if you think about it like onions you're supposed to plant onions in winter time Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay and then they grow and then they're done in the summer now if you think about like okay onions and the grocery store is great because a lot of times it guides you in a way for what your final vegetable should look like So if you think about it, you're like, okay, if I harvest my onion in, you know, let's just say July, Mm -hmm. I need to dry it. Well, it's a perfect time to dry it. Okay. It's super hot in most people. It's super hot, Mm -hmm. you know, and it doesn't matter where you are unless you're in the Southern Hemisphere, then it's opposite. But we, I can't even talk about that because it confuses (laughs) my brain, you know, but it doesn't matter where you are at that time and period. You know, it doesn't matter if you're in Canada or whatever, you know, if that f- vegetable comes out in July, it's going to be warm enough to dry it. Yeah. yeah. Correct. So yeah, yeah. <clears throat> what a lot of people will do is they make drying racks for those things. And they're literally like two pieces of wood that are maybe like two or three inches apart, like gaps. Mm-hmm. And they mm-hmm. just go down and they'll make like whole racks. And then you slide the bulb in so the bulb is on top Mm -hmm. and then you just let them hang. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. that's why a lot of people braid their garlic. Yeah. So they can get multiple garlics together to dry as they hang them. So Mm -hmm. there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, I am. I know about um, onions. I have not successfully. So this is the first year I tried to grow onions and I did it wrong. Um. You know, I used, so the first thing I did is I planted them way too late, mm-hmm. um, like three months late, because I was trying, I was like, <laughs> okay, I'll, you know, start before your frost, and I'm supposed to plant mine in January. Mm-hmm. And then the oh, other thing okay. I did is I used those easy seed ones, those coated ones. Uh-huh. And they you apparently are- seeds, okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, and they're apparently not very good to use it's really hard because onion seeds actually if you have a packet of seeds for onions that are a year old they're not good Mm -hmm. they're really short-lived live um, seeds so you know that being said you have to keep that in mind is now that you you know i I, because you know i'm guilty of it you're i know you're guilty of it and i know you know eleven thousand of the people listening to this are guilty (laughs) of it where they will fold the seed packet in half and say, I'm going to save this for next year. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, onions you can't do that with, apparently. Mm, okay. They just, they don't hold over well. So, um, I had some old seed. So, and if you want to collect um, seed from them, I believe they're biennial, so you have to let them grow for two years. Just like a carrot. So many things. So, feels like so little time. It is. So when you dry them, though, it's it's literally just think about the grocery store, mm-hmm. but don't mm-hmm. wash them first. Do not wash them first. That's the and that's number a general, one thing. That's a theme, you know, that's across a very, it because yeah. you're introducing moisture again. Right. And More we've talked moisture. about, yeah, yeah, how the idea is that you want to dry them in a dry place. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to, in some instances, when we talked about, you know, the potatoes as, as an example, you're withholding water, you know. So the idea is, you know, all of that safety that they have in that dirt, you know, is able to keep that thing fresh. And then if you're introducing water to it and saying, and I'm also going to take it out of its home, the dirt, you know, yeah. and that part of that whole 
um, the drying part, the curing part. Well, first it has to get through all of that dampness that you've created by watering it, right? Yeah. And you may be lucky where the timing works out, but you may not. Hence the, uh, now I get like the mold piece of it, you know, so. Well, think about it this way. When you go to the grocery store and you buy a sweet potato, do you still wash it? Uh, if I eat the skin, I do. Like, oh, I don't, yeah, until so- I, I'm actually about to cook it though. I do it when yeah, I'm about yeah, to yeah. cook it. Yeah, but yeah. you know when you wash it, it's still dirty. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It ain't dirty because they kicked it on the floor and use it as a soccer ball. You know what I mean? They're like, yeah. they don't wash it either. They brush them off a little bit better than we yeah. would. Yeah. But and I think that's a, I think washing of vegetables comes from people buying stuff at the grocery store. So you know you you always wash the stuff from the grocery store because they got yeah, all that nasty yeah. shit on them. Mm-hmm. But for me, like now, if I grow it. I don't wash it other than like, unless it came out of the, like, like carrots, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. obviously you wash your carrots, but hell, my son eats them right out of the dirt. He'll brush them off and eat them. You know, he's like, it's a little gritty daddy. I'm yeah. like, well, yeah, it's going to be gritty. <laughs> yeah. A little so. dirt doesn't hurt though. But for things like, I mean, I know you don't wash your tomatoes, but for things like your, remember I was telling you about the clean lettuce, uh, mm-hmm. real quick tangent. I brought my lettuce out. And I'm so mad at myself because I have uh, some lettuce that did so well, but I only started like, I only did like six heads, started like six heads of it. But anyway, I put it on on the back porch and it's actually been the perfect time to, um, to harden off um, the plants that have come from the grow room, you know, based on the weather here, it's overcast today, but I was making a burger last night and I'm just like, I've missed the crunch because it's been about a month since I've had roughly about a month since I've had lettuce. So I'm in there mm-hmm. like, you know, picking off a couple of leaves outside on the back porch. Like I only need just a few, you know, they're still yeah. in their, their, the nursery pots, you know, like I still haven't even planted it yet, but I'm like, Hey, it's still edible. Um, and clean. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's the, that's the big thing about it too. You know, for me, lettuce is really important to grow cause we eat a lot of salad and I've mm-hmm. noticed that if I'm not growing it, I don't eat it as much. Yeah. Yeah. It's just I'm not into it. And that's something that does get washed because it'll get a lot of dirt in it and stuff like mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, as far as like your summer vegetables and stuff, we don't really wash a lot of them. I mean, because, you know, we know what we put on them. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. I know that like, you know, if I spray BT on it for a, an insect, you know, in a couple days it's gone. Yeah, yeah. You know, if even that. So it doesn't take much, um, you know, a good rain and shit's washed. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. but... um. Yeah, so as far as, you know, your root crops and all that stuff, though, it's it's all about don't wash them. And I know it seems counterintuitive because you pull it up, it's like coated in dirt. <laughs> and, you know, you're going to have like dirt. on. You're going to have so much dirt under your fingernails from digging them up that your fingernail will lift up off of your pad of your finger. <laughs> it's just going to be packed in there. And they don't call them taters for no reason around here. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, a you know, but that's just part of it. But, uh, look, I don't know about you, but it is time for something and it's your oh. turn to give oh. the recipe of the Let's day. Let's do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. This episode is proudly brought to you by San Diego Seed Company, a company that is dedicated to providing organic heirloom varieties of seeds for your small urban farm. That's right. You heard me. You are a small urban farmer. You provide food for your family and share with your neighbors, and they are dedicated to providing you with the best seeds for a bountiful harvest. Check them out at sandiegoseedcompany.com or on social media at, you guessed it, San Diego Seed Company. All right, so uh, my belly is full right now, but it's not full based on this recipe, but I did just make this, um, and this is really off the cuff, but it's an old time favorite. So I did stuffed bell peppers, but not your big, huge, traditional bell peppers, right? Um, I actually have grown confetti peppers, which is kind of a snack pepper. Um, first time I grew it, love it, love it, love it. It has a variegated plant leaf and the peppers have various colors on them, but they're probably the size of your pinky finger. Um, so they're petite. 
And what I did was, and the reason why I like this is because it doesn't require long cooking time because they're so small. Um, so I cut the a very small piece of the butt of the pepper. I don't know what it's officially called. She said Just butt. So, yeah, I know I did. <laughs> yeah. All right, so just so I could actually sit it and let it stand up in a casserole dish. Um, so I, I don't know, maybe I had about 10 or 12 of them. And so I cut just again, a small piece just to even things out. Um, I had made some rice um, and then I actually had some refried beans. And if, I mean, I didn't, didn't grow these beans, but for refried beans, there are a bunch of different ways to do it. Um, I think I started off with a little bit of oil, um, some onions, some garlic. Uh, the beans were canned, right? Tossed the can of beans in, um, some seasoning like cumin and salt and pepper, um, and ultimately mashed them. I added a bit of butter. I'm just going to be honest with you, good people, because I don't want to lie. And it made mm. all the difference, man. I literally said to myself, like, I don't understand why butter has to be so bad for us, you know, because <laughs> it makes everything so good to me. But anyway, uh, mashed them up with, um, you know, potato masher. Um, but what I did was I took the peppers, put just a sliver, you know, just with a butter knife, I took and put some of the refried beans in. I put a layer of um, just one jalapeno pepper. And then I layered, I actually had the rice that I made on top. Um, And so I coated the pan that I had. I actually did it in like um, a cornbread roll or like um, like a bunt pan. Uh, So it was just enough to keep all of the peppers upright and together. I cooked it for maybe 30 minutes. Now all of the ingredients are already cooked. The refried beans are already cooked. The pepper doesn't matter that much as far as the jalapeno pepper. Um, and then the rice was already cooked. So I'm basically just melting it all together. Um, I took it out of the oven. I cooked it at probably about 400. Cause again, I was just making up the recipes I went along. Cooked them at about 400, came back in about 15 minutes and noticed that the peppers, remember my base pepper was soft. So I'm like, hey, it's time to go. So I layered in the bottom of the um, dish I was serving it in some more rice, popped those peppers in, added some salsa, a little bit of avocado if that's your jam, and it it's some good eating. There'll be a picture on my Instagram if you want to check it out once you listen to this, but it is good stuff. And even though my belly's full, I'm actually reminiscent of that meal. And you didn't so put I bacon used, or any meat in it? No, no meat. Completely vegetarian. Uh, I it, Vegetarian because I, I did add cheese at some point after I pulled it out of the oven. Um, so, yeah. yeah, man. Good stuff. Are you vegetarian? No. No, I've, I've dabbled, but I'm a meat eater. Um, but I do... Not big meat eater though, right? No. No. I try yeah. to stay... A, I, I mean, I don't... I like a lot of vegetables, luckily. Um, and then there's some times where I just, I feel heavier, you know, when it comes to how yeah. much meat I eat. So especially in the summer, I try to balance it out. But I can, you know how I feel about beans, man. I am always tempted to say my garden should just be full of beans, not string beans, but you know, you're shelling peas and beans and all. Pinto beans, man, I could probably be happy with a garden of tomatoes and pinto beans. I'm um, actually thinking about growing pinto beans next year. Are you? I'm, I'm looking into it. I'm not sure. It's confusing to me. Yeah, let me know. I mean, I just, they're so, I mean, cheap. I'm going to say it. They're so cheap in the stores. A bag of beans. What's a can the point? Of beans. Yeah, yeah. I, I struggle with it. Unless someone, if you guys are going to tell me like it's going to be a better bean than I've ever had, then I consider it. But um, it's my absolute I'm going to go beans. ahead and... S- I'm going to go ahead and say, no, it won't yeah. be better. Yeah, exactly. But it's on my path of sustainability for me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we're going to have an episode about this coming up, actually. Um, but to grow a garden for health wise, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's like the one element of the garden that's not provided. You know what I yeah, mean? Is the protein. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, I mean, we have chickens, but. I don't grow chickens. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> you know, it's either that or, or I'm thinking about that or peanuts. Mm-hmm. So, I've actually had a couple of people ask me about peanuts this year. Um, I'm a peanut freak. Uh, freak. Are you? Yeah. 
it's that's uh, one of, there are I, a handful it, of things that i don't eat often but you know remember i told you when i eat it like peanut butter right when i eat it it's just like why don't i eat this for breakfast noon and, and, and night you know um, well you want to know why i had to tell you to wait a few minutes to record because i was eating some peanut butter <laughs> not even gonna lie i had to that's get it out of my stuff, mouth man. it was yeah well you know and you want me to tell you a deep dirty secret about myself deeper dirtier yes please so when you eat peanuts how do you eat them no i break the peanut in half and then i do two separate breaks of the halves to get to the peanut do you so you shell them yeah i don't shell them i eat the shell and all that's right i don't i don't even understand that you want me to tell you my theory? You want me to tell you my theory? On why you're not a weirdo? And everyone else that's listening, if you do it that way too, I say with love, welcome to Ben's Weirdo Club. No, everybody that's listening to this doesn't do it. And everybody that's listening to this is weird. And I'm going to tell you why. Why? I'm going to tell you why. So when you go and let's say, let's take it nostalgic back to 2019. <laughs> and we all go to a, a, a baseball game. Uh-huh. What, what, who's the baseball team in Chicago? I don't even know. What is it? Well, for me, it's the White Sox, but some people would say the Cubs, but we don't care about okay, those people. Okay, so we got, let's just say, so full disclosure, mm-hmm. I pay it zero attention to team sports, obviously, but we're going to the, to the you said White Sox? Mm-hmm. We're going to the White Sox and you get you get some peanuts, right? Mm-hmm. Don't they do peanuts at ba- baseball games? Yeah, And they're sure. salty, correct? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Oh. The shell is salty, but when uh-huh. you open them up, is that peanut salty? No, no. <laughs> Boom. Boom. That's but gravity, texture, bitch. I just dropped it, the I mean, mic. It's kinda... uh-huh. I do it. Uh, yeah, yeah. So did you stumble upon it? Were you like a kid and you didn't realize you were supposed to shell it? And you were no. It or... I just picked it up one day and I was like, I'm so... I was like, actually, I can tell you when... I was backpacking one time and I was extremely hungry mm-hmm, and I had mm-hmm. peanuts. I was like, I'm just going to eat it. I don't even care. And I was like, <laughs> this is pretty damn good. Extra fiber, extra uh, flavor. I got to know baby. if there's anyone else out there, man. There's not many people. I've not come across many people and I get some weird ass looks when I do it. But well, you see this that's look. how I eat peanuts. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's well, how I eat my peanuts. Me, and you said when you asked me, I knew where you were going. And I was trying to hide my disgust. <laughs> and have you ever eaten a raw peanut? A green peanut? No, I haven't. They're pretty good. Oh, no, I don't. Okay. I do shell those because the shell is um, still wet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it doesn't have that same. But I, they're pretty good. They're different, but they're good. Because, okay. you know, we eat boiled peanuts down here. Yeah, yeah. I have heard of you guys down there eating boiled peanuts. Do you eat boiled yeah. peanuts? Nope. Have you ever tried it? Nope. I'm going to hook you up. I'm okay. Thanks, though. Appreciate the No, I'm going to hook you up. I'm going to hook you up because it needs to be in everybody's life. A good old hot <laughs> boiled peanut. Good. Mm. That's the good stuff. But, um, yeah. So, and, you know, it's funny. You were talking about um, butter. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was talking to um, the other day. I was talking to the backyard cook, and he's a big butter guy. Cooks with a lot of butter. Mm-hmm, so. Mm-hmm. Oh, what's that? Nobody's heard of the backyard cook. Stay tuned. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, he's a big butter guy. So I've never fried anything in butter or anything like that. Never. Oh no. Mm-mm. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you're not talking like deep frying in butter. I'm talking about pan frying with butter. Yeah. Well, he was referring to deep frying. Oh my. I've well, never done it, but maybe semi deep fry. Maybe yeah, no, I, I don't I mean, know. I, I know it's not like a full pan of butter because butter will burn yeah. too quickly. But I get, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm with them. I'm with them. Yeah, that's not me. So, yeah. well, think about the but creaminess sounds- of the beans, right? And so you add the butter to it, and that's. I mean, again, I wouldn't recommend that you, um, you make that a normal habit, but. I don't know how often you or listeners eat refried uh, fried beans. I don't eat refried beans a lot because I can. I'm good with the regular pinto beans, but that's what I really wanted. So I eat refried beans a lot, actually. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah Mexican food is um 
and I know it might not be Mexican food, whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In my mind, it is is my favorite type of food. Yeah. Mine too. So, Aww. yeah. Ding. <laughs> tacos are the uh, tacos are the way of the world. Oh, as it should be. That's yeah, actually where it so. started. I actually, the plan was to make um, fajitas in a in sense because I had a bunch of bell mm-hmm. peppers, like regular bell peppers, regular size bell peppers, and I had a bunch of the itty bitty ones. And you don't want to slice up the itty bitty peppers to like you know toss in for fajitas or whatever and so when i said fajitas i said oh i'll make you know some refried fried beans i'm like oh i never make and you know um it commonly referred to as mexican rice you know so tomatoes because you know i got tomatoes right um, yeah. so once i got to cooking all of that up and i had some mushrooms so it was going to be a vegetarian kind of fajita uh, I was going to use the mushrooms for kind of the texture of the meat. But then once I got to cooking everything up, I'm like, oh, I can just make two meals out of this. You know, I ended up eating the fajitas the next morning for breakfast. Don't judge me. <laughs> and I would never these... judge you. I respect you for that completely. Yeah. And I have nothing but respect a... for you and the way you eat. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, and the peppers and the stuffed peppers for uh, lunch that day. So yeah, it's good eating. It's um, I'm actually going to play around with the idea of freezing those. I'm not quite sure it may be too small once it comes to the consistency. Um, so I'm not sure if it should be frozen after it's cooked. It probably should be frozen before it's cooked, but a handful just to see how it comes out before um, people- it's cooked. Yeah, people freeze um, stuffed bell peppers, like the real size stuffed bell pepper. So I know that yeah. that works. Um, so before I put it in the oven, but when the other ingredients are cooked, obviously. So yeah, I'm going to well, give it a you, try. When you freeze peppers, they lose that... Um, firmness. Firmness, yeah. Yeah, but the so, idea of once you cook a stuffed pepper, like the idea of it, it, it you do lose the firmness. It's supposed to be soft, so... Yeah. I just think that it may be um, too soft based on that size. I think you still retain something when you do it as a um, regular size stuffed bell pepper. But we'll see. I mean, I think part of what I'm doing now um, and part of what um, kind of we talk about next year's garden, it's really, really f- honing in on the things I really, really enjoy. And that's the reason why something like curing is so important. Right. You know, so potatoes are it's my top five. It's in my top five of all time. And to be able to grow more of those in my 898 garden beds, you know, (laughs) would be super. So cucamelons won't be in there. Um, You know, I think I'm going to have a a cucamelon seed giveaway. Like I keep on. Don't even give them away. Just try to extinct them from the planet. (laughs) So for those that. Can I? Seriously. Yeah. So for those, um, we were talking about this. I was doing a front yard garden tour and I was talking to Ben about this offline too. Like I've seen cucamelons a lot in like social media gardening where people talk about them. They're the cutest little thing. It's not quite a cucumber. It's not quite a melon, right? It's not even supposed to be a blend of the two. It's some other species, but it's, you know, supposed to be this sour taste. And that's what I was looking for. And everyone you see that does a video, they're like, everyone I've seen prior to growing them, it's like, oh, they're so cool. And it's like, oh yeah, it's sour, you know? So I grew them and they grew, they took a long time. I direct sowed them back at the beginning of the summer, took a long time, but they produced, um, and they taste like nothing. The only time yeah, it tastes so, like something is when I believe that they're spoiled. And what I'm afraid of, buddy, is that that's when people are like, here it is. It's sour. I'm just like, you're all going to die. Like, <laughs> So here's the thing. <clears throat> First of all, if you haven't listened to our social media gardening episode, go listen to that. Mm-hmm. And then rem- remember or come back to this conversation because not 30 seconds after I got off the phone with you that day mm-hmm. I went and looked at it and somebody had a picture of cucamelons in their hand and said if you're growing these and you don't post them in the palm of your hand there's something wrong with you <laughs> and it's like this craze about this vegetable that has come about over social media mm-hmm. is insanity and I have heard from many people mm-hmm. that they don't taste like anything they're not worth growing they are just cute Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and tell you something. There ain't no space in my garden for something that's just cute. It's got to taste good. See, there's something that's, it's something with the way that this, it's something because the 
another name of it is sour gherkin. So it's supposed to be sour. So either the place I got the seeds from was a womp, womp, womp moment and the place they got them from, there's something about the growing conditions. This could be forcing nature. I don't know. I'm going to research it this, like it's one of the great garden mysteries in my mind now. I'm going to research it this winter um, because like there's no way. I mean, I think they could be fun for kids because there's not a taste. So it's not anything that they would probably dislike. But I'm right. not growing for kids, you know. <laughs> um, no, and I'm and, and nor should anybody necessarily. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, my son likes carrots, so I grow carrots. I mm-hmm. like growing carrots, so I grow mm-hmm. carrots. But you know, other than this year, have you ever seen cucumelons to the amount that you've seen them this year? No, because they do I mean, stick. I've, if you see a picture yeah. of them, they do stick yeah. out. I have a picture of them with, in my hand somewhere, right? And I the caption yeah. says, "I'm gonna keep trying until they taste like something." Like, you know? yeah, <laughs> like, like I still don't get it. But um, I saw them for the first time maybe two or three years ago, and I've seen them more and more because I mean it is eye catching. But yeah. that's not the reason it's like why dahlias. I guard him. Yeah, well, no, those are beautiful, and they should be in the, everyone's I'm not garden. De- yeah, I'm not denying that, but I'm saying in the social media world, dahlias mm-hmm, are mm-hmm. very stop important. You in your tracks. So, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So the cucumelons are the same thing, but every time I look at them, I'm like, man, I know them things don't taste like nothing. You know what I mean? I just look at them and I'm like, damn. And it's like it's so funny because so many people have said they don't taste like anything; they're just pretty. As and soon as I tasted it. Then that's it. I don't know. It's like when you buy a red car, that's all you started to notice is red cars, maybe because I didn't see not one person. I didn't hear from one person saying they didn't taste like anything. Everything I saw was, yeah, you know, they're kind of sour. Um, and I now, but this is the thing I'll never be able to confirm. So I've actually had some of them um, pick them off the plant, brought them inside, and remind me to tell you on a different episode, like the system I had to create to try to keep my harvest straight, like how old one thing was versus another. But I'm like, oh, I didn't realize how old it was. Popped it in my mouth. I'm like, ooh, that's not good. Yeah. Right? And so I was outside and I liked, we talked about this earlier in the year, to be able to pull something off the plant and just eat it. And that's the perfect thing for it. And so the ones that are right on the plant are the ones that taste like nothing. The ones that are about the same size that have fallen on the ground. And, you know, it's, there was some, um, I'm not eating dirt like, you know, uh, little Ben and big Ben, like, um, <laughs> I, uh, but it, there are wood chips there. So I'm just like, yeah, you know, put it in my mouth and I'm like, nope, sour, sour, meaning like gone bad sour. And so yeah. my wonder is, is what spoiled, what I'm describing is spoiled. Is that the sour they're talking about? And if that's the case, then it's just nasty, you know, <laughs> <laughs> So they either taste yeah. like nothing it's, or they're nasty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've never grown anything that's just straight nasty. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, so to me, tomatoes are nasty. Like I don't mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. a fresh tomato, but mm-hmm. I like to can them. So that's yeah, why we grow yeah. them. But, you know, like anything that like other people would eat. I don't think I've ever grown anything that's just nasty, mm-hmm. you know, not if you get it in its prime. I mean, you know, I've eaten arugula sometimes when you've left it in the garden too long. And it's kind of like, oh, that's not good, you know. Yeah, but I don't eat arugula, so. What I'm describing to you, once it's sat on the my garden floor or on my counter for far too many days, it's like... It's like the milk you would, you know, if, if you if you eat any drink any animal milk and you have it in the refrigerator for too long, and that moment where you're like, oh, it's gone bad, like that's what it tastes like. So maybe yeah. that's the advertisement on these seed packs. Like, <laughs> it's, it sounds gross. I'm yeah. all set. I mean, yeah. it's, it's you know they're they're very eye catching, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. very mm-hmm. eye catching. So, yeah. um, it's it's just it's amazing, but. I'm all, I'm all set, man. I can't yeah. do it, you know. And that's important for me to remember, too, as the end of the season comes and as mm-hmm. I start scrolling. Mm-hmm. Because you start to see, you know, there's a lot of pictures that people that just post their harvest and you start mm-hmm. to see a trend. Mm-hmm. And some things are eye catch. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'd like to grow that. I'd like to grow that. That's interesting. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. But then when it comes to food, you got to really look. And I ask you a lot of times, like, what's it taste like? Mm-hmm, like everybody mm-hmm. else is like, oh, it's pretty. It's pretty. I'm like, what's it taste like? Like, yeah. I want to know. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, you're growing purple green beans. Like, do they stay purple when you cook yeah. them? 
you know, like all these types of deals. Mm-hmm. So I actually which, have, by the um, way, I th- and, um, but you know, I think that eating is also visual. So, um, I have these Ico Ico peppers. Yeah, I have these Ico Ico peppers, and part of the draw was that they turn various colors. Um, and right. but the seeds are more expensive than your regular, you know, kind of sweet pepper seed. So I probably won't buy them again. I'll grow them again next year because I have some seeds left. Um, but it's like one of them was a pale yellow color, which is kind of cool for a pepper, right? Uh, sweet pepper. Another was like a dark purple. And that's just sexy, right? You know? And then I realized that another one was going to turn kind of this orange color if I would have left it on the plant. But anyway, I had someone, um, a fellow gardener ask like for the purple one, what does it taste like? And I'm saying to myself, excellent question. Like it it looks beautiful. You know, I put one leg up and and turned my head and, and dangled my, you know, the, 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 all of the hair on the left side of my head and got the perfect picture. I did all of that and it looks good, but she's like, what does it taste like? And I said, you know, I wanted it to be exotic, but it tastes like a regular old bell pepper. You know, that's That's the the thing, man, you know, and that's the thing. Like everybody's like, Oh, the red peppers are more sweet. I'm like, it might be like a minuscule amount more sweet, but the amount of time it takes for it to go from green to red Mm -hmm. is not worth it because you're stunning the plant's growth. Yeah, that that's point. a whole oh, that's a whole series of an episodes. So I believe that green peppers in my garden Which we're and, gonna get into in the future. Yeah, and red peppers. So here's your teaser. There is a difference in the taste once you've let a green pepper once you pick a green pepper and then once you let a red pepper go um go ripe. Now I say that yeah. from the garden because once you get them because we know what happens when it comes to what you get in the stores, they all taste that, you know if it's yeah. same you know so um but i think that it's um super duper important that you point out that you're letting this thing this fruit stay on this plant for so long how many do you think you're going to get from that plant how many more for me right. it doesn't matter so much because my window is so short like i don't get for those size fruit that size fruit i'm not going to get a second and third round of peppers so whatever is out there once those peppers come to size is what's going to be out there you know but that's now, i've never gotten giant bell peppers Mm -hmm. have you yeah i just picked um it's actually like big ones like you get from the store yeah like big ones i got from the store Um, mine are always smaller my regular bell peppers too that there are a couple of different um types of sweet peppers that are designed to get bigger but um the my neighbor's plant the one she gifted me she gifted me a bell pepper plant and you know she told me she's going to come down with her harvest basket last week and guess what happened she didn't and guess what i need red peppers for a recipe so you know i got plenty others that'll turn red she you know she's welcome to anything in the garden um but yeah they're big you know um i haven't cut into them yet so i'm interested in how they taste it wasn't something i started from seed you know so it was something that was bought you know from just regular home depot which is totally fine obviously i've done that for a decade or more um, right. So, but yeah, it's probably maybe eight, seven, six, seven, eight um, peppers on that plant. You know, so. Yeah. But they're pretty big size. At least half of them are. And you didn't have to cure them. Yeah, right? Right? But now I have to you listen. I'm on day to. two, man. I cut it off the plant yesterday. You know, peppers actually keep even um, on the counter for quite a bit once you have them out of your garden um and yeah. even once they start to go soft if you're going to cook them you still have an matter. opportunity to cook them yeah which is yeah. one thing i love about peppers but so look we're going to um in the next garden update we're going to be revisiting this curing um to see how we've done mm-hmm. essentially mm-hmm. yeah so um you guys come back for that what's the next episode do you know are we talking about i do know in three two one so this one we'll be talking to you guys it's going to be a garden update i think so they're going to hear this and then it's going to be a garden update okay so possibly in the next episode you're going to hear about um our you're going to hear about batavia's curing you might not hear about mine i haven't decided yet so I haven't decided well, if you're going to uh, do it or you're going to talk about it. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to do it. You know, okay. I have a little bit of a window. So, but, um, you know, we'll see. So I hope that everybody's kind of gotten a good idea about how to cure their different vegetables and 
you know, how to make them last longer. And mm-hmm. if you take the right steps, it's quite remarkable how long they will last in a cab- mm-hmm. in a cabinet. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, no yeah. canning, no freezing, no drying. Well, I mean, they're drying, but no like dehydrating or anything yeah. like that. So speaking um, of, just real quick note, I have my cherry tomatoes that I dehydrated and had in some mm-hmm. oil in the refrigerator. Candy, man. Is it? Candy. Like, I was just saying, I need to go make more, but then I'm like, I don't know if I should make more. I think I'm going to actually freeze them in a jar just like this. It's like, what's what's this, like the half pint, pint? Yeah. Whatever the smallest um, ball canning jar is. I think I'm going to freeze them in that. Um, just a couple more because it's it's delicious. Yeah. So, do you have anything to tell the good people? Um, hold on. So, you know, we're talking mid-September. Well, just hold on. Like, you know, (laughs) hold on to life, right? This is, this is a message. This is a, you know, daily affirmation that comes around, you know, in the beginning of September for me, Uh, I'm starting to get, it's wearing on me, you know, it's starting to be a lot. Um, you know, the world is still crazy, you know, um, you know, we're still trying to love on our gardens, you know, and, um, I think I saw a post from you that said something like, even though the garden hasn't loved me back exactly the way I want it, you know, you're going to continue mm-hmm. at it, you know, so hold on. We still got a little time to continue to grow some things. Um, and, and yeah, we'll be here. Yeah. You know what? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm going to say? Go out in your garden right now, stick your face up next to your tomato plant. And take a deep, deep breath and remember that smell because they're going to be gone soon. But I want that to be the last memory you have of your garden for the rest of the year until next spring. But until next week, we'll catch you guys later. See ya. Thank you for listening to us today. If you want to follow us on Instagram, you can find us at Backyard Gardens Pod. And we share gardening tips and clips from the show. And we would love to see your gardens and share them with everybody. So if you want to join us and you want to share your gardens, feel free to use the hashtag BYG podcast. And if you want to see us on video, you can find us on YouTube at Backyard Gardens, where we have the full show and clips and all the recipes broken down for you. And until next time, learn to grow and grow for change. And we're going to call it a wrap. Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in.